there's one up the open line? Oh yes, I was about to get to that. Um, Ten minutes to kind of get situated and show up, and one of our performers is like up there somewhere in the, in the other space. So yes, pull one is small like this because it's almost like turn the chairs towards each other. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Um, Hi everybody in the Facebook land. Upstairs. upstairs. The only way is if. So much energy, and then, I, and then like the whole thing like had way too much force behind it because then I was just like all the anticipation and the <laughs> nerves, and then it was over. It was just like like the ground had been cut away, and I was just like, oh, that's right. I don't live like this. This is just like a one event thing that comes and goes. That's how I feel when I do Molly because you're having so much fun that it feels like it's over in like one minute, and then you're like, oh, well, that was. I guess that happened. Yeah, I put a lot of work into that, and then it happened. It was great, but now it's over. Yeah, I always remind myself that my life was good before. It was. Yeah. So this is Pauline Oliveros. How do you like it? I feel like interesting is the word I want to use, but that's also the word that like my mom used when she uses when she disapproves of someone, but has to express it in the most Midwestern way possible. So now I just can't call it like, interesting anymore. Yeah. And I always hear it in her voice where she goes, well, that's not interesting choice. Yeah, I think moms are just really, like, good at that. Where yeah. Just, like, how did you turn this into a negative thing? I don't know. <laughs> like, now I just can't. It's like, the, it's like the Midwestern bless their heart, you know? Bless their little hearts. And what's funny is I know just so many people from the coast who say bless your heart, but like they don't mean it that way. And I'm like, you, you need to be really careful with how you choose to apply your language because it doesn't mean what you think it means. <laughs> You're going to really confuse a lot of self It's true. I like to think it means whatever you want it to mean, but it's all about context. And yeah. The context and you're starting from zero. It's, it's not ideal. Yeah. But this is interesting without the weird. Yeah, it's interesting because it happened so long ago that I feel like noise music now is kind of in the vibe of that. So it's not like such a far cry, you know? Yeah. How you doing? Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. Love you. It's possible. Um, I'm Jonah. Jonah. Monsi. Sorry? Monsi. Nice to meet you. Did I already give you a beam? No, I didn't have one. So I'm excited to do uh, a Pauline Olivero score today. Yeah, um, but I think we should get started soon. How's everyone feeling about that? Yeah. 
cool. And so I was thinking for um, this amount of people, we can just face each other. Um, yeah. We are also welcome to the people at home on Facebook. They'll be tuning in and just kind of like getting a feel of uh, the event and stuff. I always like it because, you know, like that weird FOMO feel, but it's also like a documentation thing where it's just like, and then it's there and I don't have to think about it. Did you get a zine? No. Cool. And um, do you want to um, do any part of the open mic? Um, no, not at the moment, but I might change my mind. Okay, cool. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Nice. Any, I mean, you know. Takes track, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe that'll be my act. <laughs> cool. Liquid courage. Yeah. All right, so I'll go ahead and kind of start the event. So, welcome. Um, this, right now, I'm going to turn off the, the CD for a second just because I'm distracted by it. I feel like, like with Pauline, it's not background music. Uh, okay, so um, a bit about um, Keep Begin Detach. Um, this is our third event. Last month we um, were inspired by Yoko Ono, and then the month before that we were inspired by Lori Anderson. And next month we'll be inspired by Isadora Duncan. So good, fun. I love doing these things because um, Theoretically, I'd go back to school, but really, I just like to learn, and so it's a it's a good excuse to have like a little container for all the things that I'd want to learn about and get pumped about, and kind of incorporate that into performance art. Mm -hmm. And so, everyone here receives one of these zines. Um, so you'll see all the text I um, listed from Wikipedia, except for this part where I talk about um, the monthly event and about me. I'm not in Wikipedia yet. All right, and so um, follow along. I'm just gonna kind of skim over the text. Uh, so Pauline Olivares uh, was an inspirational, experimental musician, performance artist, and um, she's a local figure um, who somewhat recently died two years ago in November. And um, she um, co-founded the uh, San Francisco Tape Music Center. Uh, that yeah, and uh, has since uh, that that center has moved to Mill College. And so, if you ever want to like get a, a feel for like essentially that kind of genre and um, stuff, you can go to Mill's College, and they have a bunch of courses. She's she taught there and. San Francisco um, Tape what? San Francisco what? Tape Music Center in the 1960s. Oh. She served as its director mm -hmm. for a time. But yeah, so um, for um, for people that just get into Pauline Oliveros, you'll you'll probably know her most for what she um, pioneered as deep listening. And so, fun fact, it's just a pun. So don't get like too warped about what is deep listening. So what happened was she and some of her friends decided to play music in a cistern in uh, Port Townsend in Washington State. And they went like 20 feet underground into this like echoing cavern where it reverberated like the delay was like 48 seconds or something. So it was like a long time for it to come back. But yeah, um, so these musicians and her were down in there and they didn't plan anything. They just started playing and while they were playing, they were listening to each other. And so she said, oh, you know, we're deep listening because we're underground. Yeah, I get it, because it's deep. Anyways, so the, the fun part about it is um, she turned it into seminars, her band called Deep Listening Band. And so um, it kind of carries uh, like on into like the rest of her career. And um, she's given seminars. People are like certified deep listening um, I wouldn't say gurus, but like that kind of thing where it, like they train under a program to educate people about deep listening. Um, so um, she has a really cool TED talk 
where she talks about this and she says how it's kind of like deep thinking where you're kind of like thinking beyond you're kind of like listening beyond and so at first you might not um be um, listening to all the things but it's kind of like deep thinking where it's like you're going further than you might have thought possible and there's always more to go into hi hi is this the halloween celebration it is Yes. Okay. Welcome. So I was just going to give in some background on, on Pauline and specifically deep listening. Thanks. Sorry for what you Oh, yeah. No problem. Are you interested in doing the open mic part? Um, I have nothing prepared, so yes, of course. <laughs> okay. Uh, should I write your That's name down? Um, yes. Okay. What's your name? Eric. Eric. Nice to meet you. I'm Kat. And so we're kind of just like glassing through the zine just to get a feel for it. And we're still kind of on the third page with a uh, deep listening. But yeah, so um, what I like about deep listening is that it, it relates to free improvisation. The idea that you kind of go in with nothing and you can like feed off the people you're working with and um, kind of find a groove that's completely organic and kind of like from tabla rasa to like like this kind of weird echo growth kind of creation. And also, uh, like, one of the reasons why she's so inspiring is that it's meant for people trained and untrained. And so anyone can go into deep listening and feel like they are tuning into something and, like, is a practice, but it's also like a somatic experience. And so, um, yeah, it's similar to sonic awareness. And without getting into like all that um, stuff, but it's just like there are two kinds of things where it's like you can focus your attention, but then you can also expand your awareness. And so um, Pauline Oliveira has a few um, pieces where she asks people to listen for everything, but also listen to very specific things. And so it's kind of interesting seeing that happen in her music scores. Um, so yeah, I think for um, uh, for right now, I would like for us to try to challenge ourselves to be attentive and aware of the space we're currently in right now. I think there's something really special about deep listening where it just kind of helps you um, become present of your, your real surroundings, your physical surroundings, and things that are just part of the environment, traffic, air conditioning, floors, and there's something really special about that uniqueness. Like there's no other place like where you are right now. And so just for a couple minutes, I want everyone um, to practice some of that deep listening. And so I'm gonna um, start my mental timer and then for two mental minutes, we're just gonna kinda like you can either keep your eyes open or closed, but just kind of like think about the sounds in this room. All right, and so we're gonna start right now.
to this room and to each other. Think about stuff you heard and listened to. And so I like doing that. I kind of like what what kind of sounds am I hearing? Um, it's a great way to kind of like eavesdrop on people and find out something really funny. <laughs> but then also just like, yeah, what is that humming out there? Stuff like that, I'm very curious. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Are you here for the event? I'm just in, yeah. Okay, hi. Um, so we're doing um, an event inspired by Pauline Oliveros, who's a local legend, um, specifically with experimental music. Um, she uh, co-founded the San Francisco Tape Music Center. And so, um, yeah, tape music is, is like the very beginning of the electronic music scene, where they would cut tape and put it together, and weird sounds would happen. And I love that approach, because it really helps redefine what is music. Uh, maybe. You want to clean, folks? Hi. Sure. Yeah. Come on in. I made enough for everybody. Yeah, you can just pass me down. Are you here for the event? Yeah, yeah. Terrific. Come on in. Uh, we were just getting started. So. Yeah, we had a, a two-minute deep listening exercise where we we're kind of getting a feel of all the sounds that you can hear and listen to. All right, so we're just kind of like leafing through the zine just so you can kind of get a feel for it. So um, we just finished the exercise, set a timer, and uh, so it's just like listen to everything you can hear, challenge yourself to be attentive, then aware, feel your focus, expand, and contract. All right, so now I'm gonna get a little into some, some new stuff that not everybody might know about. Who here knows about graphic notation? Ooh. Who here writes music? Okay, how do you write music? Anyone else? Write, write music? songs. How do you do it? I quite often start with text. Sometimes text and music come together and I record them. And I use Sibelius, which is a music notation program. Cool. So that notation program, what does it put out? Uh, it uh, writes the music just as you would read it, and then it could be printed, but it also plays it back for you. Okay. Multiple staves at a time. Okay, so it produces staves with little dots and stems. Music notation. Yeah, so that's what they call Western music notation. And so what I like about graphic notation is that it is um, a representation of music through visual symbols outside the realm of traditional music notation. And so it evolved in the 1950s, around the time that Pauline Oliveros is starting to make music but also experimental musicians like John Cage, who um, made it happen. And so you can kind of read the history in, on this part about graphic notation and also about uh, the new concepts of music at that time. For example, 433, popular John Cage piece. Who here doesn't know about 433? Everybody knows about it. Okay, so I love it because there's four minutes of silence, but he counts it out and he's at the piano. But uh, yeah, often you can just like hear the, the air conditioning. That's <laughs> But yeah, um, and fun fact, I love John Cage. Um, he's so interesting because um, he really puts into perspective what music is. And we can just uh, get to that in a second. Uh, so, um, <laughs> Part of my sense of humor of making zines is that like right in the middle of this I just put the entry for Wind Horse from Wikipedia in it and so um, you can kind of uh, read that and we can get, get back to it but then if you flip to page 10 you'll see uh, an example of graphic notation and so um, this one where it's time-based 
and it's got like pictographic elements is for water walk by john cage and so um he essentially maps out uh how much time he's gonna have and then he puts little things in it to help remind him what to do and so um this um this stave also is pretty neat because it's just like similar to western notation but not so standardized where it's just like here's the high pitches here's medium and kind of generally like how much time they should take but yeah so um you can also have it more abstracted and uh, we i don't have an example in the zine but there's something really interested about kind of like interesting about kind of intuiting what music sounds like from a visual reference like you can kind of get elements of sharpness and maybe that's like high shrillness or like roundness and that's just kind of like long endurance tones and so um did everyone here bring a pen Cool. So um, I would like all of us. Did you bring a pen? No. Okay. So I'm gonna give you this pen. I'll get my own pen. Everyone else brought a pen. Okay. So we're gonna take a few minutes and just kind of um, draw out a little visual reference of some music we're feeling like writing the score for right now just any old thing it doesn't have to be good or clever and it might just be like a cool drawing that you can then interpret later this is just carving out some time to do that and so it's on page 11 and so think about time do you want to like mark out a grid where you have minutes or seconds or you just want to have a thing that you feel out and think about later you can write a legend anyways all these kinds of fun decisions to make but then also no decisions at all you can just start and see where it takes you what i like about free improvisation is sometimes you gotta start and see what you do and then respond to that and kind of continue making and responding and see where it goes and so we'll spend about five minutes on this and it might seem like a long time and um, it, it kind of is for for drawing
How's everyone doing? Good. You finding something interesting to to do? You, you feeling complete about it? You feel like you want to work on it some more? Good enough for me. Cool. So everyone, go ahead and take a look at what you've done. Do you think you'd be able to remember what you were thinking about it later when you come back to it? Or do you feel like you need to add notes about what the things mean to you or what instrument you're feeling for it? Or um, so there's a few like aspects of scores where you're, you're thinking about pitch, duration, and Maybe. rhythm or other things like that where it's just like what do these things mean? What could you possibly interpret them to mean? And um, some of the stuff, it's like cultural where you don't even realize that it might mean that to you, but it wouldn't mean that for everybody. Uh, some uh, people have done scores like this and then leave it up to the performer what those things mean. And so it's really fun um, thinking about how someone else would interpret what I've drawn. Is anyone interested in performing my score? Your score? Yeah. No. Are you interested in performing your score? Um, not this one. <laughs> okay. I'll perform your score. Cool. Um, Unless somebody else wants to do it. Any, any other takers? All right. Um, here you go. If you want to do it from your chair, that's cool. so cool. I was like, that's actually a chair. <laughs> but yeah, um, so yeah, very fun. Uh, I like that you don't have to like study music 
notation and figure out which lines are like every good boy does fine and which stays <laughs> is like whatever you know you don't have to figure out which staves like change things because that really gets me mm-hmm. and so it's just it's really accessible and there's no wrong interpretation mm-hmm. but yeah so um some fun facts people that use graphic notation include aphex twin and um the rest of this list i was just like you know brian you know and she's like I, you know so maybe you'll find more familiar names than I do. Yeah, and also in this scene, I have included some other scores by Pauline Oliveros. And so um, before we get to, I want to do Wind Horse with us as the chorus. But before we do that, I was hoping we could do um, some other things. Uh, what were you going to, are you ready? Uh, would you? I mean, you don't have to do it if you don't want to. For my whole thing? Yeah, as long as it. Uh, I don't know, like 10 minutes. Okay, are you ready for that? Sure. Cool. Okay, great. And so, yes, once he has some stuff for us. How's everybody doing? Okay. Okay, great. Do we need a moment? A little break? Feel okay where you are? Popcorn style means popcorn style. Yes. So we're gonna do popcorn style. Um, we're gonna introduce ourselves by saying our names. And we're gonna say our names popcorn style. And I want each of us to try and get through saying our names three times without inter- overlapping with one another. And then let's see if we can do it. Is that clear ish? Okay. So we'll start. Okay. Let's get in a little circle. I like we're kind of like. Let's get real nice and close to one another. Thank you. 
like we might be enough people. Is there anybody here who ever really wanted to fly? Are you okay with us helping you fly? I do have to ask him in advance what that means. It means, um, you think you can fly? paper, you write the worst part of your week. And then um, when you <coughs> finish writing those things, you fold them in half, and I will come around and collect them. So one piece of paper, best part of your week, and the other one, worst part of your week. And if you feel like you need more paper, I have more paper, and you can use the whole thing, either way.
So yeah, this is a, a piece that I love to do in groups and it's called Dance Therapy Slash Dance Playback. And I love that we have uh, this big space at Yom Wolfman. Often I've done this piece and we haven't had this back area cleared up. Should we label which is which? Um, no. No. <laughs> I, I love the ambiguity when I get one. I, I sometimes interpret it like however I'm, I'm feeling it. And so uh, it's interesting when it, there's something kind of neutral like interview where I'm just like, it could go either way. <laughs> so you won't be able to identify by how we tear which half goes with which half. Uh, no, no, no. Should we no. fold them up? Like yep, that, that's a good idea. Not necessary, but very helpful for me not peeking at them ahead of time. I can't help it when I see text. I want to look at it and be like, it's a little snippet. It's like my mind was just trained to put a word in there. Keep the letters come together. So it's like anytime I'm like looking at your phone, like I've immediately read what's on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite to do on Bart. My kind of Bart. That's true. I, I especially love book covers where it's just like, what is going on there? <laughs> and it seems almost like a public face kind of thing. It's mm. different than a phone where it's like a specific angle where you're like, mm. yeah. Uh, it's a good trick, especially with a, like sunglasses or something. I always feel like a little liberated with sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, this is dance therapy, dance playback. Bird bomb on my car. <laughs> Made a new friend who likes to cook food I like. Come on in. Yeah, I'm just cooking pizza. <laughs> who doesn't love pizza? I'm glad you like pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Reading Twitter, especially the New York Times clips that are from the 1930s about Jews in Europe, Hitler, and seeing how similar the language is to Trump refugees now. <laughs> Open mic Sunday at art gallery. <laughs> Good evening. 
so how about dating, right? I'm like, I'm like wondering about Tinder. So, you know how with, with Tinder, you're just kind of like, you're just kind of thinking about the stuff. You're kind of thinking about things you like to do. Tinder. Then you swipe, then you keep swiping. Then sometimes you're swiping and then you're like, that's it, I have to that's all my time. <laughs> <laughs> didn't got a job I really wanted. Get. I didn't get a job I really wanted. <laughs> Avoiding eye contact with Emotionally manipulative coworker. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Telling my friends about my crippling sense of isolation and then they make me feel better. that made me smile. <laughs> Seeing my lover and then smelling the roses. <laughs> <laughs>
Saturday, Sunday.20 seconds, so uh, the songs are uh, rather quirky, the first one, and then pretty intense, the second one, and quite wholesome, the third, mm -hmm. and that's the longer one, slightly longer. Um, so this is uh, The Invasion, which uh, was inspired by actual uh, invasion of uh, wasps, actually. The invasion. I don't understand how to get in. They don't understand how to get out. Only the superior being knows all. And then uh, we have um, two by a very famous writer you may recognize, but uh, be sure to ask me afterwards if I uh, am not clear whose words these are um, that I created a little song for. Um, if you have taken If you have taken this rubble for my past raking through for fragments you could sell Know that I long ago moved on deeper into the heart of the master. If you think you can grasp me, think again. My story flows in more than one direction. A delta springing from the riverbed with its fine fingers spread. The justice to that is, uh, I'm, I'm not moved by a lot of her poetry, but anyhow, uh, this particular text affected me. So that's Adrian Rich. Okay, and this last one, uh, I wrote uh, three little verses and a little chorus, and uh, so this is um, Hold on to hope in your heart It's the spark of your fire in the dark Ever your beacon to overcome down Hope will shine on the dream in your heart. Bottom, bum, 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 
singers who perform them, so um, I have hundreds, so <laughs> if you know somebody who really wants some material, I mean. Thank you. Up next is Eric. Um, I guess I'll perform the notation I made, and also you can all participate. Uh, so I made a line. And I guess this will be a uh, sound that will go up and down. And then go da, da, da. And then these are drawings of the different instruments. First, you sing it like a, what is this? A sheep, then a fish, a car, uh, like an E, like a mouse getting stepped on. <laughs> and then this is um, the guy from the crash test dummies that does like mm, song. If anybody's familiar with that, he's got a really deep voice. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. All right. All right. All right. Well, um, yeah, I guess I'll do it. And then if anybody wants to pick up any of these other instruments with me, um, I guess that would be the performance. That would be how that goes. All right, so part one. Ba, 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 First I wanted to do some haikus because I wanted to follow through with what I kind of joked about what I do, but I really wanted to them. I made some really quick. And then I got an idea for a, like a noise game to play. We'll try to get a couple rounds of that. If I can find. Alright, so my first one is the haikus. Oh yeah, AOL screen names. Um, these are this because this is called AOL screen names. Uh, I live <laughs> these are actual I live to smoke weed. <laughs> Juggalo for life, six nine or sixty nine. Whichever it was just in the numbers. <laughs> um, and spooky skeleton. Sorry, not and, just spooky skeleton. Uh, next, thank you. The next, <laughs> the next thing. Uh, the next one is about my dog, my old dog Ingrid. Um, you are a good dog. Wow, what a great dog you are. <laughs> you are a brown dog. <laughs> I have a third one. I can't find it. Oh, there it is. Um, this is called, um, this is written today, this is from about today, like earlier. Um, I told Jeff and Gabe and Juan on how I saw the trans Transformers 2 one time. Mm -hmm. 
That's it. Thank you. Um, do we have time for a, a quick game? What time is it? Oh, if not, it's okay. Seven forty-two. Yeah, we got time. Okay. Um, I usually just call it the cat game, I think, but we can use any noise. Uh, there will be one person who will be it for the round, and everyone will gets to stand up in the round and move to any part of this room that they want to. Um, you can kind of go against the wall, you can kind of crouch down to the floor, and someone has to make, I will call on someone to make any noise, usually it's a cat sound, but you can make any noise you want. And then the person who is it will then open their eyes and have to point the whole person who made that sound. Cool. That makes sense. I don't really know what the name is for. So who would like, do you want to volunteer, could I get a volunteer for, who wants to? Okay. You'll be the, the, the monitor. Like the I baby monitor. Eyes. Yeah, so you'll stand in the middle. Mm. Um, what was your name again? Caroline. Caroline. Okay, Caroline's going to stand in the middle. And then I guess everybody else can stand up. Um, well, at, when, I, when I say, uh, you're going to close your eyes, and then I'll say go. And then um, when I say, when I say, okay, and stop, look for me, and I'll point at you. But um, can I still close that. Yeah. And you might want to do a, a covert sound. It has to be, like, audible. But you do. <laughs> Whatever. Use your own strategy. All right, ready, set, go. open mic stuff cool all right so um for the, the closing exercise of tonight's evening i would like everyone to turn to their zine specifically to the very last page the very back of it but also refer to the last page so i think it'd be really fun to do five minutes of wind horse so I'm going to just read out 
the, the different words and uh, what that is. Wind horse is a chorus based on listening and responding in a variety of ways using the wind horse mandala as a kind of map for organizing and creating the performance. From the center circle marked listen, each individual performer chooses her own optional pathways, returning to the center circle at any time. The length of time spent on any circle could be as little as a comfortable breath or many breaths. The total performance time is approximate and may be predetermined or not. Listen, include all that it is possible to hear. Be aware of the sources. Decide whether to match what is heard or differ from it. Pitch. Listen for or create a tone, vocal or otherwise, that focuses on a regular vibration or frequency. Sound. Listen for or create an irregular vibration or noise that is not centered on a pitch. Examples could be vocal fry, a sneeze, or a rustling, etc. Match. Selectively tune as exactly as possible to a pitch or sound. Differ. Selectively differ from what is heard. Differing from a pitch could be a tiny, tiny interval, just enough to cause beats, to a large interval, to a sound. Response to a sound might be a different sound or pitch. Metrical rhythm. Means to apply to a pitch or sound a rhythm that can be measured. Organic rhythm means to apply to a pitch or sound, a rhythm that is a process like breath or clouds moving or wind blowing. Loud or softer means to apply to a pitch or sound dynamic shapes relative to what is heard. Story, tell about an experience with the wind or a dream or fantasy about the wind. Metaphor, make sounds which stand for the wind either solo or with other, others. Inner, listen or respond to what is perceived in imagination or memory. Outer, listen or respond to what is perceived outside of oneself from others or the environment. Remember that others are listening for you and responding to you. Okay, and I just wanna make clear, unlike the popcorn exercise, um, this particular thing I think we'll, we should welcome overlap. And so if you're telling a story, go for it. And don't worry about people interrupting you. They might, and that's part of it. And we can enjoy listening for that and picking up on it and shifting and all that kind of good stuff that happens with overlap. And can I get someone to set a timer for five minutes? So this is Wind Horse for Chorus by Pauline Oliveros. Against your body, and you can become. 
from a different angle to the ground because the wind is holding you up. And the noise is so loud, it makes you feel like you're on an airplane wing in the air going very fast. The wind can be characterized as this fantastic being that goes up into the sky with a big blank of wings and flies around, pushing everything back and forth in a big swirl of wind and touching. Lots of touching, touching, touching. Wind is touching, touching everything. Everything. Touching everything. Touching everything. Look, my mom's here. Look. Mom's here. Look. Here. Look. Here. Look. Look at her. Look. Sorry, what was that? What? Sorry, what was that? What? Sorry, what was that? Sorry, what was that? been Cat Countess, and um, I do this um, every month, and next month is Isadora Duncan, and I look forward to uh, seeing some of you there, or tune in online. I strive to um, live stream all of these events for people that can't make it out, and um, yep, yeah, um, uh, once again, um, I do hope you enjoyed Pauline Oliveros. Um, she's a special person and had a lot of great concepts that go beyond music into kind of like daily appreciation and relaxation and meditation. All right, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for the five facts and the experiential.